but I have a feeling his answer would probably be sure. Uh, 846, Mary Rhodes. Let's just move on to Ms. Mary Rhodes, the president of the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association that joins us. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate your time this morning. Hey, good morning. Of course. Well, well, well. So the last of the Mohicans, if you will, uh, <laughs> lifted the last of the mask. Uh, well, the mandate for the indoor mask lifted yesterday. Uh, there's a big press conference mm-hmm. with the, the full on countdown and the removal of the masks. Uh, I went to I went out to lunch with my son uh, yesterday, and I don't know it's just out of habit. I wore the mask, went in. Of course, we sat down, took it off, got up to leave, put it back on, and then as we exited the restaurant, I turned to my boy and I was like, "Oh my gosh, we we don't even have to have this on." So I don't know what is the protocol going to be uh, moving forward. I wanted to ask kind of specifically for like food and beverage and, and restaurants. Yeah, it's really up to the venue whether or not um, they want to continue. Uh, requiring masks for indoor dining, but um, most of them are just saying it's optional. Of course, you know, a lot of the customers have conveyed that they'll continue to wear the mask um, as long as, you know, COVID is still around and there's a risk, but that really is upon the customers, uh, you know, uh, what they're feeling and and they're feeling for much needed safety. Um, I know as we are receiving guests, uh, visitors from um, off island, um, people are still choosing to wear masks as well. So that will remain optional. Um, I have not heard of any of the businesses requiring masks for indoors since the announcement was made the other day. Wow. So, Mary, I was talking with just some uh, people, you know, people eat out and stuff. And is there any discussion with the restaurants and F&B for like staff and employees to continue uh, masking up or? Um, Again, it's really more personal preferences, uh, preference. Some businesses are still wanting to, you know, give that extra measure of safety and encouraging staff. And then some staff are wanting to continue to wear their Mm. mask. Um, so again, it's still all optional. I've not heard of any businesses requiring staff to maintain uh, wearing mask uh, while on shift. But um, that will all. What's What's nice is that the governor has allowed at least everybody to make those choices and still practice the safety of of what those entities, you know, and employees uh, want to do. And so with that, a lot of businesses. Um, have a lot of the, you know, safety measures in place. They have increased at least the uh, sanitizing and increased that schedule of cleaning um, in, to ensure that customers know that they are practicing, uh, you know, health and safety protocols within their establishments. And so just to have the options and know that they're communicating it to guests, whether it's in sign-in logs of cleaning schedules or just employees maintaining masks. Again, as long as those all remain optional, I think that businesses will do what they need to do uh, to ensure guests are feeling safe, employees are feeling safe, and that we continue to um, you know, spread the word or promote the fact that Guam has remained safe during COVID um, and, and that we have worked towards uh, improving our numbers. Um, so I think that's all evident in the fact that the numbers have been going down, uh, you know, especially since last year. Yeah. And um, a lot of our neighboring islands have, have also reduced those measures or those restrictions since last year. Um, and so I think that this is the trend that we need to continue to go, especially as we have been, uh, you know, reopened for tourism. Yeah, and that was, I guess, my next question. So this this uh, lifting of this indoor mask mandate, it, it wasn't random, right? They had kind of set this date yeah. a little while uh, back, right? So um, since it's kind of the last restriction to fall, I was thinking that we would see the plan or, or you know, action on, on tourism. But just, I guess, where are we on, on uh, the reopening of tourism? Well, GDB, you know, they had just gone out right, to Korea and Japan. And um, a lot of those conversations, I'm sure, were taking place. The Recovery Task Force met um, about two months ago. And and so the discussions have been taking place with those key source markets. We have uh, marketing offices in those host countries or, or country of origin. So within Korea, Japan, and that's really the priority, especially uh, Korea being open um, and they do have to 
stay on Guam at least 10 days in order for them to return without having to quarantine. And so that's really key because that extends their stay here. And um, I think that that will shorten as Korea feels more comfortable with any outbound travel for returning um, uh, Korean nationals. Right. So as far as a plan, um, I know that GBB has a Guam campaign that they'll be running. Um, called Go Go Campaign. Um, so that that's taking place. Uh, GHRA has been, uh, uh, you know, really trying to work with them on some other things. We had a meeting with them to discuss uh, some additional uh, promotions and then also uh, just any of the protocols with regards to tourists who do have to test upon their return. And so I do know that they had a meeting with the hotels last week um, with, with regards to those protocols and ensuring um, that you know everybody knows which clinics are participating and what the process is uh, should anyone test positive. Uh, because we do not have the QFAC, we do not have an ISOFAC. Yeah. And so our, our guests will have to stay in the hotel, similar to when we have a military uh, personnel or any anyone who's staying in the hotel, either short or long term, uh, even a contractor, whoever happens to test positive, they will have to uh, isolate in the hotel. So we've had those protocols in place, uh, you know, really for the last two years, and um, it shouldn't be any different for any tourist who happens to test positive. But um, so far, it's very, been very minimal, uh, even throughout the pandemic, and uh, those numbers have been reported to public health. Mary, uh, you said that the Korean uh, arrivals will have to stay for 10 days so that they can, uh, I forget exactly what you said, but is that is that way outside what the normal Korean visitor or how long the normal Korean visitor was staying like before the pandemic? Oh yeah, absolutely. They were staying three to five days, right, on average. And so uh, being required to stay 10 days before they return, just so that they go past that five day mark, uh, should they test positive. I think that that has been an opportunity for any of the markets. If Korean tourists are going to be staying 10 days prior to their return to Korea, uh, that's been an opportunity, right? So um, they opened up uh, the end of first quarter, beginning of April, and a lot of markets have really been welcoming uh, the Korean nationals into their into their uh, destination. And so that's a huge opportunity as long as they are requiring them to return after 10 days. If they do return earlier, then they just have to quarantine, isolate at home. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they have to go somewhere. They just have to isolate it or uh, quarantine at home. I see. So Mary, like how long uh, do you think it will be before we start to see the big arrival numbers. I mean, you know, I'm not. I'm well, not talking trends, like the the pre-COVID the the peaks, right? But when is it going to start to ramp up to where, you know, we can be comfortable? Yeah, that really depends on the airlines, right? Announcing regular schedules to Guam, and what we've been seeing, uh, especially last uh, last year, end of summer through uh, November, when we saw arrivals from Korea. Uh, and even Taiwan, those were all charter flights. Those weren't like regular uh, flights that are on the online travel agency schedule. So we are starting to hear that um, it is trending upward, uh, especially beginning with summer, uh, with the summer months of July. And I do know that we are having more uh, military exercises, you know, come June. Um, so that will really help, especially with the summer numbers. Um, but it is trending upward, especially towards July. Um, and so if you can imagine, right, even though they opened April, if we didn't really start getting those conversations going until April, then it takes at least, you know, 30 to 60 days, if not 90 days yeah. for us to get on an airline schedule, for us to uh, start getting visitors uh, to even want to schedule a trip or to even know that we're we're, we're open and flights are, are readily available. So it does take uh, some time, 30 to 90 days, really to get on that schedule and for people to start uh, booking flights. So, um, so July is really when we start to see that number mm. go up. Uh, Mary, I saw you came out with a release. Uh, you guys are conducting a training. Yes, so we know that a lot of people are still receiving their LEAP funding. Um, there was a first payout, I believe, in February. And then uh, the last part, the second half of the group, 
um, received their funding just last week from GITA. And part of the, one of the caveats, um, part of the, the forgivable loan program is to rehire staff. And so GHRA rolled out a program, a training program, um, so that businesses who are rehiring employees or even new employees, if they've never worked in the industry, uh, GHRA has uh, really worked with public health to offer health certificate courses for free. So you are required to have a PPD test if you're a brand new employee um, and never submitted a PPD test to public health. If you have uh, worked in the industry and let's say your health certificate lapsed or uh, you just need to renew it, then you don't need to submit a PPD test to public health. But we have secured classes with public health every Monday. Um, so if you're interested in taking your health certificate class, renewing that and your employer uh, registers you with GHRA, then we can certainly offer that for free. This program is um, actually offered through a grant that GHRA received through GITA. And that GITA grant is part of the QCCC series three, as well as five series, um, which is funded by the Guam Regional Medical City, GRMC, through their QC program. And so we're really grateful to GRMC as well as GITA for offering the free trainings. Um, we have up to $75,000 um, to offer free health certificate classes, um, free, you know, health and safety classes, OSHA classes, anything to do with the individual's, um, you know, requirements for them to be on the job, whether it's a health certificate, a BTA pesticide certification class, uh, as well as a responsible alcohol server seller act class like TIPS or TAM. Um, and then also uh, any of the OSHA regulated classes or even just education outreach. So we've offered a whole slew of classes, um, but more importantly, the one with public health is really the key one because you need that in order to have a, a job within the industry for certain positions. So we've worked it out with public health where we were covering that through the grant. Um, and so majority of our classes are on Mondays, knowing that most people work weekends. Um, so we've made it available mostly on Mondays and I'll make sure I give you the registration forms if people want to sign up for that. Thank you, Mary. Uh, I wanted yeah. to ask, uh, because, uh, yesterday I had a couple, uh, friends of mine who, like in the restaurant, uh, business, but they shot me a message and they were asking me things like, um, how many temperature check machines do we have to have? And where do we put our contact tracing, uh, sign out log? And I, you know. I had to tell one of my friends, I was like, I think they undid that about the couple of executive orders back. So can you, Mary, just share what are the protocols for right now for covered establishments under the public health emergency? So those all changed, that all changed in February. Um, and so they actually removed all of those requirements in February. Um, so businesses really, if you are putting uh, plexiglass as safety guards or temperature checks or sign-in logs, that's really more on a voluntary basis. Mm -hmm. And so those are not required anymore. Um, the covered establishments, um, it was just amended uh, the other day. And really the covered establishments cover more for daycare and uh, like senior centers and uh, places where social gathering takes place. As far as um, restaurants and dining bars, uh, it's not mentioned in covered establishments memo 2022-12. Yeah. Um, so, so that's really more for businesses, childcare facilities and things like that. For covered establishments for restaurants, it's really just um, more with regards to um, the mask uh, for employees, but that has since removed, right? So for social gatherings and, um, and and uh, dining, even the six feet markers, that's all been removed. Um, so there really isn't much left required. Uh, even buffet, that can all be self-service. Um, they've really, even that signage, all of that um, is just removed. The only thing that's required again are just the cleaning and disinfection um, schedules. Uh, there is a COVID checklist for public health when DEH does their inspections. And so I can share that with you as well. Okay. There are two checklists. 
One is a sanitary uh, checklist when DEH does their food inspection and safety inspection, and then there's a COVID checklist. So only the items on the COVID checklist are really in place. Uh, they have not mentioned covered establishments for dining or social gatherings um, in their last memo. And so really anything that you were required before during your pandemic plan, um, it has since been removed. Mary, do you ever anticipate that uh, any, you know, equipment or uh, gear associated with uh, mandates that were previously in place might be needed again? Because I'm just thinking as business owners, I mean, you know, maybe their instinct is get rid of that plexiglass. I'm tired. It reminds me of COVID. I want it out. So what would you, yeah, I guess, what I mean, would you, you advise can, these businesses? You can repurpose it, right, and use it in other areas. Um, we certainly use those in our office, just at the desk. Um, or even check in for a cashier if you want to. Right. Um, so you can repurpose it and put it in other places or just put it in storage for now. Um, you know, we can't guarantee that this may not come back. There may not be another surge or another variant that comes out. But certainly for now, um, it's you don't need it. You're not required. You can still have it in place if you want to. Uh, go above and beyond and continue to share that message that you're taking that extra step for safety until COVID is completely gone. So it's really up to the establishment, but public health isn't requiring it. The things that they require, again, is really more ventilation, uh, a cleaning, a regular cleaning schedule, uh, proof that, you know, there's a log for the cleaning, um, things like that. So I will certainly share that um, sign in log with you. Uh, and sorry, the checklist for COVID inspections through department or the Department of Environmental Health. That's the most helpful uh, document you can refer to now because that is what they will check upon entry to your establishment. Um, Mary, what's the status with the uh, LEAP, the Local Employment Assistance Program? Did did Where are we with the 2.0? Um, we, I know that uh, because they just finished or near, I guess they're near completion or just finished the payout um, for LEAP, the first LEAP program. I know that they are considering uh, possibly a second one. Um, I'll follow up with Mel to see where they're at with that, uh, with that as well as Ed Camacho uh, and Mel Mendiola. But I know that uh, amongst board members that that has been discussion in discussion. You know, I've mentioned it to the governor as well, yeah. um, especially if arrivals really aren't trending upward till after July. And even at that, we're going to nowhere be nowhere near the numbers where we were in 2019. So it is going to take, you know, at least a year is always been the estimate a year to two years for us to get to that number. Um, even with pent up demand for travel, uh, just the fact that, uh, you know, we're estimated, you know, to be only in the six figures at the end of this year, um, really the businesses will need that assistance um, towards the end of summer because LEAP will only take them through the beginning of summer. Uh, so really a, another round for the businesses that have been the hardest hit will definitely need another injection uh, in order to continue, you know, uh, keeping everybody employed and keeping doors open. I do know that with LEAP and with the reduction of um, the mandate, especially the mask mandate, uh, we've seen some business closures, but we've seen announcements of businesses either reopening or uh, just really opening new outlets within hotels mm. where dining facilities, uh, dining outlets will now uh, reopen because of the removal of the mask mandate and because LEAP um, has, is, part of that requirement is to rehire. So businesses are rehiring. Uh, we, you know, UOG had a job fair uh, last week. GHRA is going to be looking at a job fair as well, um, because so many pe so many businesses have many openings, and there seems to be, you know, uh, a, a small percentage of interest right now in people wanting to go back to work. Or I like how you put business. that, Mary. <laughs> yeah, a small percentage of interest uh, in people wanting it's, to go it's back. Very, to work. very little. <laughs> yeah. So, for example, I mean, there's hundreds of jobs available, right, at yeah. IHG opening up. Um, a lot of the hotels and especially even the restaurants are needing to rehire staff, especially if the service levels are going to be 
at what we expect them to be once the tourists come back in July and the exercise taking place this summer. And so a lot of the hotels and the restaurants are rehiring, even with retail, uh, you know, DFS just reopened. Um, so a lot of the businesses and the optional tours have been reopening just the last two months. And so if you can imagine between those businesses and the pent up travel demand and the increases we expect this summer, we are rehiring tourism, hospitality, all of those jobs in retail, optional tours, hotels, restaurants, they're all available. Hire Guam has uh, the list of a lot, a lot of the jobs available. They themselves with Department of Labor have been doing something different for hospitality jobs. And then GHRA is offering free health certificate classes yeah. just to get you back into the industry. So please take advantage of these programs taking place now because everybody is looking to hire. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, with that minimum wage increase, all of that, a lot of businesses are taking on a lot, um, not just during the pandemic, but just the increased costs of everything. And so for us to rehire says a lot about what businesses are are showing as far as their commitment back, you know, to the island and and just to try to get the economy going again. And so that's why we really hope, you know, um, the to know, uh, Governor uh, Leon Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor Tenorio administration. We hope that they will strongly consider a second round for LEAP, but really more specifically to the tourism businesses that we know will need that assistance through the summer as we're waiting for arrival numbers to increase because uh, it will definitely take time. But we have to start somewhere, and I've seen a lot of positive signs um, from businesses, especially in the rehiring process. So recruitment is really tough right now. Um, and so if you have relatives who used to work in the industry, please know everybody is really uh, rehiring right now, and there's ways to get your licenses renewed and covered for with federal dollars or with QC dollars, as in the case with GHRA, GITA, and GRMC. Thank you, Mary. Anything in closing? Um, just, you know, May is tourism month. We did a proclamation signing with the governor yesterday and the lieutenant governor and uh, with Senator Shelton. So uh, we are celebrating tourism month in May, which is apropos for the fact that we're, we've are we reopened. Yeah. Uh, we really hope to get the announcements for the airlines uh, in coming back and having regular schedules to Guam. Uh, but GHRA is celebrating Tourism Month next week, Wednesday, May 11th, from 6 to 9 at one of our original founding hotels, who's also celebrating 50 years. That's at the Hilton Guam Resort and Spa, May 11th. Uh, it's a Wednesday night from 6 to 9. So, Chris, you know, I hope you, Jason, everybody, if you guys want, please join us. Um, it is from 6 to 9. I hope Kay Wim will be there, as well as um, a lot of businesses. Right now, we we do have quite a number of businesses who have supported. Uh, we we add our we are at 170 already, um, and so we really think want to thank all the industry uh, industry stakeholders and all the employees, especially this month for Tourism Month, because um, you know, unlike some businesses, our our industry has remained open throughout the pandemic. And we really need to celebrate those who have continued to work throughout the pandemic because, you know, they really take on a whole lot more, especially with fewer employees. But we're trying to welcome everybody back. And so please support us, um, Tourism Month and GHRA on May 11th. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. And we'll put that in our calendar. Maybe me and Jason will make it a, a mandate. Okay, great. See It'll ya. be great to see you guys in person. Right. Not just on Zoom. Right. Thank you, Mary. Okay, thanks. Good luck. Uh, 909. Let's do uh, Cover Me, sir, to close out the show. Uh, it's brought to you by Docomo Pacific and Burger King. New Whopper melts available in regular bacon and spicy versions. BK, your way. Thanks for